Hey, David Rathoff here. Um, one of the things I've been uh, working on and that I'm really interested in is um, financial planning. So uh, kind of uh, interested in, for myself, uh, just being able to have a long-term kind of picture of you know, where my fin finances are uh, heading based on uh, what I'm doing today. Um, and I there are tools that I use that I like. So like, for example, uh, Mint's really good at um, doing things like tracking your monthly budget and making sure you're like staying on target with those budgets. And it has some tools for looking a little further ahead, but I'm not really happy with how they've approached it. Um, I also think it's a very, um, it can be a very bottom up approach too. So uh, anyway, I, I wanted to make a tool where, um, you know, you could, you could really roughly and quickly get an idea of what uh, your financial future looks like based on kind of where you are today and what your habits are. Um, and without having to necessarily invest a huge amount of time or like go through the, um, the work of, uh, category, categorizing every single like purchase you're making. Uh, so something that's a little less granular, but if you want to, um, you could get it that granular. So what I'm sharing here is just, uh, in a, uh, that tool. And I'm going to run through an example of like how you might use that. Um, so uh, I'll share this URL in the video. And I'll be doing a bunch of videos on this. I'll probably be sharing some updates. Uh, my guess is weekly uh, on improvements that I'm making and kind of where I am with it. Uh, but I really want to start. Uh, I, I've been doing a bunch of versions of this, and I really just want to kind of like start getting it out in the world and getting feedback on it and letting people use it. I think even though to me it still feels maybe a little rough, um, I think it's totally usable. Um, so yeah, I'll just run through an example here real quick. I think it's the best thing to do. Uh, if you see me, if you see my eye contact falling, it's because I'm looking at the uh, the window here while I'm talking. So apologize in advance for that. So um, here you can see it's uh, there's three kind of basic categories uh, here. There's assets, uh, your budget, and then purchases. And I'll walk through how each of those works here in a second. Um, also directly above that, you can see there's a little report. Uh, just saying how much your uh, monthly savings is. And that's money that um, you're holding on to. So it's money that's not getting spent on kind of like monthly expenses that don't uh, appreciate an asset in any way. Um, so for example, like paying your phone bill wouldn't appreciate an asset because that's just money that's gone when you spend it. Whereas uh, putting money into a savings account or checking account or um, investment account or whatever, or towards your mortgage, uh, equity, uh, that kind of, uh, budget item is actually improving your net worth and some, some asset you have. Um, so anyway, uh, on the left here is kind of all those, these categories. I'll just click through them real quick. Um, and then also there's kind of a detailed report here. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit later cause it doesn't really mean too much until you get some more info in here. And then on the right, um, there's this nice chart. Um, so, uh, just for the sake of getting this video started, I put in a monthly paycheck of a thousand dollars. And this is just showing if you kept a hundred percent of that, uh, over the course of 15 years, uh, it's what this, the bottom axis is. It's doing, I think every quarter for 15 years, um, you'd see at the end of that period, you'd have 180,000 dollars saved um and that's not realistic you actually have to you have living expenses and you have to pay taxes and all that kind of stuff um but um this is just kind of like the rough starting point you can also see down here there's a little slider um these sliders are for uh, narrowing down the period that you're looking at so right now we're looking at 180 months so which is 12 times 12 months times 15 years uh, but if we wanted to, we could just look at like the next five months or something by just grabbing the slider and going down to five. Uh, so you'd see at the end of five months, saving a thousand a month, we'd have 5k, which makes sense. So sometimes it's just good to do that for like a sanity check. Um, but you could also pull up the bottom as well. So if you wanted to look at say like 12 months out uh, for the first few months of the year or something, like what does that look like? Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the basic tools. I'm going to go ahead and expand this all the way back out and scroll up so you can see the chart. 
So yeah, how might you actually use this? So just for now, I went ahead and added an asset. Um, the way I'm treating assets, uh, and, and this is something I'd love to get feedback from uh, you on to see if this makes sense to you, is I'm just including really any kind of asset. So that can be something that uh, has a principle. So if you imagine like your home equity, maybe maybe you bought a $200,000 house and you've got 20 or 30 grand equity in it. Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully put 20% down. So anyway, uh, <laughs> you should have some equity in it. So that would be an example of where you would fill out principal here. Um, another example would be if you had like a checking account with a thousand dollars in it, uh, you'd have a thousand dollars of principal. Uh, but here I'm looking at a paycheck. So, uh, what I'm interested in is earned income. So that's, um, We'll just say a thousand dollars for the month, and then if you wanted to, um, you don't have to. I'm not doing it here, but you could you could assume some kind of uh, cost of living raise and include that here as a percentage. So that would allow this paycheck uh, to appreciate in uh, like value over time. Uh, but just keep things simple. It's uh, you're gonna have a thousand dollars of earned income a month, assume taxes and all that stuff already taken out of it. Um, and then maybe just for the sake of this, let's say we have a checking account. Oh, let's call it a savings account. Say so have some kind of savings account that's got it doesn't the amount isn't really super important, but let's say we got a thousand dollars in it, and maybe you're making two percent interest on it. We'll go ahead and add that. So now you'll see the amount that's showing up here is uh, principal. That's why paycheck says zero. Um, I might do something to clarify that. Uh, so now I'm going to hop over to budget. And um, the idea with the budget is uh, you want to have a zero-based budget when you're doing planning. Uh, what that means is you want to make sure uh, every dollar of earned income is going somewhere that it's accounted for. Um, because if you don't, that means you have um, money that you're spending that's unaccounted for. So you can't really like plan around that. So if we just wanted to make this really uh, simple, we could say uh, we're just going to spend all that money on our lifestyle. It's just a starting point. So was it $1,000 from our paycheck? and just say it's gone. Like that money's just spent, you're not saving anything. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then over here, you, we, so uh, this tab is for purchases. So this is not meant to be like day-to-day -day small purchases, but more like big things you wanna plan for. So it could be, you know, paying for school, it could be paying for a car, it could be doing a trip, just some kind of like bigger, uh, you know, one, I won't say one time, but just a big purchase is not going to happen as often. Uh, this is a good, would be a good place to add that. Um, so here you can see what's happening now is um, our total, well, if, uh, one thing that's important to look at is here the paycheck value um, is not is zero forever, which is what you, what you want with the zero based budget. So, um, all that money is being spent. We're not spending more than's in the paycheck, uh, but we're also not spending less. It's exactly zero. So that means we know where that money's going. Um, and then here, this is our total net worth over time now. So, um, you'll notice that's going up. Um, and basically it's going up, um, by the amount of interest that we're earning on that checking account. Um, so it's just gonna slowly creep up over the uh, quarters, uh, which is, if you look at the bottom axis, it's now doing quarters, so every three months. Um, so that's gonna just like slowly creep up over time. So it's not really a great plan at the moment, just making a little bit of interest income, uh, but nothing, uh, nothing too great. <clears throat> so here, Instead of just saying lifestyle, we're going to say, instead of just blowing all of our money every month, we're going to add another item, which is um, savings. And now we're going to just try to save, um, a I think a common savings rate in the U.S. is 5%, which is actually pretty low. Um, let's just 
try to be a little more aggressive with it and we'll say 10%. So <clears throat> out of the thousand dollars that we keep from our paycheck each month, we'll just try to save a hundred. So we'll just say, um, that's coming out of the paycheck and it's going into savings. Um, and we'll go ahead and do add. And you'll notice over on the right here, we've overspent our, uh, paycheck lines negative and getting more negative. Uh, it's because we need to actually take it out of what we're spending on our lifestyle. So you'll notice right away that line over here got cleaned up and it's uh, back at zero. Um, so that should be good. We can just close that. Um, so And you'll notice also uh, our savings up here jump from just being $2 for the interest uh, up to uh, $102, which is good. Um, so now maybe a good time to just take a quick look at this report here. Um, so if you click on that savings, you'll see there's actually a, uh, quite a bit more detailed report that's showing, uh, you know, you're earning a thousand dollars in income a month. Um, you're earning a little bit of interest each month. Uh, the total that you're earning is a thousand and two dollars. Uh, you have $900 in expenses. Uh, so that's money that's just going out the door. Uh, so that's the living expenses number. Uh, that's not improving an asset. So if you take your income of $1,002 and your expenses of 900, that leaves you with $102 of total savings. And then um, kind of the cool thing here is you can say, well, um, your assets this month are worth 1,000. And then because you saved 100, you're saving 102 next month, your assets are worth this much. Um, so it just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of how your assets are improving over time. Uh, one thing I'd like to do is add the ability to like show this report for any month in the future. I just haven't gotten there yet. Um, you probably have like a rough idea of um, how your assets would be improving from month to month um, now, but you may have, you basically don't have any way of like understanding what it would look like in the future without some kind of report like this and just jumping ahead. Um, so I think that'd be a really useful thing to have. And then here you can see, um, for uh, these are just some uh, useful rates to keep an eye on. So 100% of earned income is budgeted, which is good. That means we're doing a zero-based budget. Every dollar is going somewhere. Uh, and then uh, here, we've got a savings rate of 10%, which makes sense because we took 10% of the paycheck and put that into the savings account. So this is an example where the, this report's really easy to understand. Um, as you add more and more um, budgeted items uh, uh, in a situation that's not so simple, this report can get helpful just to kind of show you where you are uh, versus where you want to be. And yeah, that's more or less it. Uh, there's some cool things you can do with this in terms of planning, though, which I've done personally, which are um, like planning for purchases, for example. So say you wanted to buy something that cost um, $5,000, so maybe that's a trip. So you wanna do a uh, some kind of international trip, or I don't know, it can be anywhere, Italy trip. Let's call it a Italy trip. And you know that's gonna cost $5,000 between uh, your plane ride and accommodations and food or whatever. Um, but you wanna make sure you have the money is the trick. So um, you're being responsible, you're not just gonna like you know, rack up a bunch of debt in a credit card and leave it there. Uh, so the trick is you may not know exactly when you're going to have that money. And we have a really simple scenario here where there's really only one paycheck and uh, one or two expenses. Um, so uh, you might be able to guess when that would be, but when your budget gets more complicated and your assets get more complicated, it uh, can get really hard to predict. Uh, but what we're going to do here is just if you look on the right, um, you can see this total line is going up and up and up. And somewhere around year month three, year three, it looks like it's crossing over to be above 5,000. But um, let's say we were really you know excited about this and we wanted to do it in a year. So we'll just put in 12 months from now. And we'll say it's going to come out of savings. We'll go ahead and add that. Well, you can take a look here at what happens right away. So our savings are go are 
savings and our net worth are going up and up and up. We get to a little above 2000 and then all of a sudden we plummet to negative, I don't know, what is that? Almost negative 3000, I guess. Um, and which is obviously bad. It means we don't have the money. So re realistically we can't do this unless we want to just throw a bunch of um, debt on a credit card. Uh, but we're trying to be responsible. So instead of doing that, um, what we can do is even, you know, you can look at the graph if you want to and figure out exactly like where that month would fall, or you could just go over here and just start pushing it forward. So instead of doing it in month 12, can we do it in 13 or 14? And basically you can just keep clicking this until you can visually see that boom, I'm above, uh, no, I never falling below zero basically and maybe you have a minimum you need to uh, maintain in your savings account so you don't even want to do that so maybe you want to bump it forward another who knows uh let's just say a couple months or something let's try to get it up above a thousand so realistically uh you know you wanted to do that trip in the next year or two uh you know don't want to rain on the parade but uh you know realistically with your current situation uh, it wouldn't really make sense to do for like four years. And, you know, that that can be, uh, it can feel like a frustrating thing. Like, oh, this tool's telling me I can't go take a trip. And that's not really the point. The point is um, realizing now that if you made that decision, you're actually putting yourself in a really bad spot. Um, and there's probably some way to st still do that trip in the next two years. Like you just need to either cut down on your living expenses or, um, you know, find some more income or find better investments or whatever it is. But like, that's kind of the whole, the whole, uh, purpose of financial planning is to help you like figure out how to spend the money on the things you actually want to spend the money on and do it responsibly, um, and help figure out if there's stuff that you can cut out that really doesn't matter to you. So, <laughs> um, that's actually one of the things I'll be adding next to this tool is like making it really easy to see, well, like, Hey, you know, um, if I wanted to, cut back my lifestyle. Like maybe I've got really expensive cable TV and I'm not even at home. Uh, maybe, you know, you live with your significant other most of the time or whatever. Um, so that's just like a pointless expense. So you could go in here and you could say, well, I don't need to spend that, you know, let's call it 150 a month on cable TV. So now we're going to just bump this down from 950 to 750. And then we're going to hop over here and we're going to say, well, now we have, an extra 250 a month we can throw into savings. So if we top, if we add that here, we're going to get a total of 350. And then you'll notice just right away, this whole picture. Oh, I did something bad. Did I go? Oh, 250. Sorry. Just noticed that that line on the bottom for uh, the paycheck was not zero. So I knew it, I knew I'd mess something up. Um, so yeah, now I'm, I've got 250 a month going towards savings. And now if you look over here on the graph, you can uh, see right away that uh, at four years, when we spend that 5,000, we actually still have lots of money left over. Um, so now we can go back over to this purchase for this Italy trip and we can say, hey, you know, I really did want to do this sooner. I didn't want to wait four years to do this. So um, let's go ahead now that we're saving more money and see how much sooner we can do it, right? So... We'll just start bumping this back and like it's pretty dramatic right like we just went from four years down through three years now we're at two and a half it's still totally safe to do it we can keep seeing if we can do it sooner uh yeah look at that like two years um 24 months looks really doable and you still have some savings left uh, maybe you're like really excited and you just want to go ahead and do it as soon as you can for some reason so let's we'll just keep going until we basically you know, get close to zero. Don't want to get at zero. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at that. So just with like making one adjustment, uh, relatively, you know, painless adjustment to living expenses, um, we're able to do that trip, that Italy trip that you wanted to do instead of doing it two years could actually do it even sooner. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just cool too. Cause like, uh, a lot of things that you're or in your budget that you're spending money on, um, might be things you really don't even care about. I, I know like personally at the moment, uh, I want to switch phone plans cause for no reason I'm paying about $60 a month more, uh, than I need to. And that's just something I need to go clean up. Uh, and sometimes I just don't have the motivation to do that. But with 
you know, if you start looking at the things that you really care about, like if I was trying to do some kind of trip like this, uh, and even let's just do it. Let's just throw it in here. Let's see <clears throat> if I really want to do this Italy trip. Um, I can save $60 a month on, uh, my phones. And that's, that's, uh, no hardship to me. Like it's exact, basically exactly the same phone service. So I'm going to take another 60 off of that and put another, sorry, put another 60 towards savings. Let's see what that looks like. So again, we know we're good because we got this zero line here for paycheck. So every dollar is going somewhere. Um, and you can see, <clears throat> you can see, um, we've still got some room to play with the date that we leave here because there's still some money left over. So, you know, maybe you can even move this almost up to one year from now. Let's see. That's ooh, right above zero. Do we go below zero? No. So if you really wanted to push it just with that small adjustment, uh, you could take that trip six months sooner. Right? So it's just all these little choices. Uh, but, um, you know, they really do make a difference, um, even over the, the coming, you know, two to five years or something. Um, and if you look much further out, I mean, they can make a much bigger difference. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the, the, that's the whole point of a tool like this and planning. It's not just something to geek out on. Um, although I do enjoy geeking out on it. Uh, but yeah, I just, um, for me personally, this has been a really great tool. I really want to get it out so that people can try it out. Um, ultimately too, like kind of my aspiration with this is, um, financial planning just isn't taught really anywhere uh, in the U S like you don't get it in primary school. You don't get it, um, at college. <clears throat> there used to be microeconomics classes, which were, which were, I think for my parents' generation, a little bit more geared towards financial planning for the household. Um, but even with that, a lot of people really depend on their companies to, or employers, I should say, to kind of handle their retirement, um, which is just not a great plan for a lot of reasons. Um, yeah. And, and then I think also schools assume that parents are teaching their kids this, so they don't have to teach it. And that's not the case. Like if you look at financial, uh, savings rates and just financial literacy related numbers, they're pretty bad in the U S. So um, yeah, I'm just excited about the idea of being able to, you know, potentially share this with, um, you know, kids that are in like middle school or high school or even college or adults, but get people thinking about it earlier in life. Cause the earlier you start thinking about all these things, um, the more control you have over your financial future and like being able to do the things you want to do. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thanks for watching this video. I'll be doing more on, on, uh, this topic and then also probably I'll probably start doing regular updates on where I am with this. I'm hoping to do like one every week or two, just depending on um, how much uh, progress I'm able to make and share. Uh, but I do think there'll be a number of also just pure like programming related uh, videos that come out of this. So if you're less interested in the financial side of uh, things here with this tool, uh, and you're more interested in the programming, I'll try to make it clear which of the videos that I'm doing are more about programming and um uh, which ones are more about actual like financial planning. Um, yeah, there's already like two or three that I know that I want to do based off of some recent changes that I've made. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thanks for watching this and, um, yeah, there'll be more of these videos coming and, uh, um, yeah, look forward to doing more of these and thanks for, uh, sticking around and watching this.